Let's say you're going grocery shopping and your shopping list is 3 kg potatoes, 2 liters of juice and 1 dozen oranges. Now, what are these things in your list? The kg, liter, dozen? That's right. They are units. Units that we use in our everyday lives to measure the quantity of things. But now suppose I add to your shopping list one mole of salt. So do you know how much you need to buy? Do you know how much is one mole? Now don't go to the store and ask for one mole of salt because it's not an everyday unit. They're going to get confused. It's the chemistry guys unit. And that is the one goal in this video to really understand how much is one mole. And then we'll finish off with our top three exam oriented questions on this topic. Do you have an idea how much is one kg of salt? Next time when you go grocery shopping, you can check the salt packets. Usually it says one kg. Do you know how much is one gram of salt? Let me show you. This spoon contains about one gram of salt. But the question is, how much is one mole of salt? One mole is defined as the molecular mass in grams. Let's break down this definition. Molecular mass is the mass of one molecule. And the substance here is salt. So to calculate the molecular mass, we need the molecular formula. So what's the molecular formula of salt? That's right. It's NaCl. So if we want to find the molecular mass, I need to use the atomic mass of sodium and chlorine. And they are 23 and 35.5 respectively. But I'm going to approximate chlorine as 35. So the total mass of salt is 58. Now this is the relative molecular mass. We need to take the molecular mass in grams. So one mole of salt is 58 grams. Let's go ahead and measure one mole of salt. Here I am measuring one mole of salt. And as you can see, it's exactly 58 grams. Note that the mass of the container is subtracted out. Let's take the example of a liquid. So how much is one mole of water? Water has the molecular formula H2O. Atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and oxygen is 16. So the total molecular mass is 2 into 1 plus 16. That's 18. So one mole of water is going to weigh 18 grams. And here I have it ready for you. So I've got one mole of water here. And as you can see, it's exactly 18 grams. Let's take the example of a gas like oxygen. Let's say this jar contains one mole of oxygen. So what is going to be the mass of oxygen in this jar? Again, we need to take molecular mass in grams. Oxygen has the formula O2. The atomic mass is 16. So oxygen's molecular mass is going to be 32. So one mole of oxygen in this jar is going to weigh 32 grams. So on the table here, we have one mole of salt, which is 58 grams, one mole of water, that's 18 grams, and one mole of oxygen gas, which is 32 grams. So as you can see, one mole of different substances have different masses because it depends on their molecular mass. Mole is often written as mol or mol in short. So one mole is the molecular mass in grams and it's also known as the molar mass. Let's put this definition of mole based on molecular mass on our concept board. Mole can not only be expressed in terms of mass, but also in terms of the number of particles. That is the number of molecules present in the substance. Obviously, the number of molecules 
is going to be really, really, really large because each molecule is very, very, very tiny. So we can't hope to count the number of molecules. We need to estimate it. So if you think about it, how are we going to estimate the number of molecules present in these one mole samples? We can use the formula number of molecules is the mass of the substance divided by the mass of one molecule. Let's start with salt. So the number of molecules is the mass of one mole of salt divided by the mass of one salt molecule. The mass of one mole of salt is the molar mass in grams. So it's 58 grams. And the mass of one salt molecule is 58. Now this is the relative molecular mass. That means it's 58 times heavier than one hydrogen atom. And one hydrogen atom has the mass 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. If we plug in those numbers and divide, we will get 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 salt molecules. Similarly, we can calculate the number of molecules present in one mole of water. The number of water molecules will be the molecular mass of water in grams divided by the mass of one water molecule. Similarly, the number of oxygen molecules will be the molecular mass of oxygen in grams divided by the mass of one oxygen molecule. So if we plug in the numbers, we will get the same number. In fact, no matter what substance you take, you'll get the same number of molecules in one mole of any substance. That is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules. This special number is known as Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's number. In some textbooks, you might find it as 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. Let's pin this definition of mole based on number of molecules on our concept board. Now let's take a look what is the volume occupied by one mole of a substance. But remember, this works only for gases, not for solids and liquids. One mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters at STP. That's right, it works for any gas. Now, do you know what is the meaning of STP? It stands for standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature means the temperature is zero degrees centigrade. And standard pressure is one atmospheric pressure or the normal pressure that we feel on the surface of the earth. So suppose I set my room to STP conditions. Now the pressure is one atmosphere and it's zero degrees centigrade. So it's freezing cold right now and just hold on, I need to go and grab my jacket. <laughs> ah, that's much better now. So let's continue. Let's take the example of a gas like oxygen. So how much volume will one mole of oxygen gas occupy at STP conditions? That's right, 22.4 liters. So to visualize this volume, I'm sure you've seen this one liter bottles of water. So you can imagine 22 of these bottles. That is the amount of volume that oxygen is going to occupy at STP, where we are taking one mole of oxygen gas. In fact, one mole of any gas whether it's oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, they all occupy 22.4 liters at STP. This is called molar volume. Let's put this definition of one mole based on volume of a gas on our concept board. Let's say I want one mole of oxygen. Since it's a gas, I have all three options of measuring it. That is the mass, 
the number of molecules and the volume occupied by the gas. So if I use mass, then I need 32 grams of oxygen gas. If I'm using the count of the molecules, then I would need 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 oxygen molecules. And if I use volume, then it's going to be 22.4 liters of oxygen gas at STP. Of course, counting of molecules is impossible. So typically we use mass or volume when we are measuring a gas. To help remember this important relation, you can learn this one sentence. One mole of any substance is equal to the GMM, that is the gram molecular mass, and that's equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules, and that's equal to 22.4 liters at STP if it's a gas. Now that we have finished the mole concept, are you ready to move on to our top three questions on this topic? Here are the top three questions. I encourage you to pause here and try to solve these questions. I'll be posting a video on the solutions soon. You can find a link to the solutions video in the description below or search for it on my channel page. So I hope the mole concept is really clear to you now. As we've learned in this video, it's a very useful unit in chemistry. So now you can be a chemistry geek and go and write your shopping list in moles and confuse everybody. And don't forget to like, comment and share this video and hit subscribe for my channel.